Here is another salivary gland, but it is not 100% uh, serous. As you zoom in on it, you could see that these whitish areas, which have the classical staining properties of mucin in that they are white and washed out and have the nucleus displaced more towards the base, are the mucus glands. I would like to tell you that the particular salivary gland that is about 50-50 in terms of mucus serous is a submandibular gland because it is. But actually, there's probably a few generally uh, more serous elements than there are mucus, perhaps two to one. You be the judge because you have a representative field. Like the parotid gland, you can also see that there are a lot of intralobular ducts which uh, have bright red, uh, slightly striated cytoplasm. You can see slight little lines. So these are the intralobular striated ducts. And if you looked around uh, with a little more patience, you would see other uh, type of intralobular duct, which does not have this bright red cytoplasm, but less of a cytoplasm, which would be once again an uh, intercalated duct. Maybe we'll see one somewhere along the line. But let's go back out and once again describe the classical uh, histoarchitecture of a salivary gland or exocrine gland in general. You have a capsule, you have bands of fibrous tissue septae consisting of the spindly fibroblasts and collagen uh, separating and, and isolating the actual uh, lobules. You can see that within the lobules you have a lot of these intralobular ducts almost all of which are striated. And also in the lobula, you have the asini. And in many areas, the asini are 100% serous, but in some areas, they're mucinous. And sometimes you'll get an asinus that's half serous and half mucinous, like perhaps over here. And if that was the case, you would call the serous portion a demi-loon because frequently it looks like it's a little moon being displaced by these clearer, more mucinous uh, cells. Um, I don't think I really have to say anything more, but I would like to really find a nice uh, intercalated duct, if I could, because most of these intralobular ducts here are striated ducts. And could this possibly be one? No. Um, I don't think we're going to see any. Maybe we'll see any some on our next salivary gland because I don't want to waste too much of your time. Oh, the one other thing I wanted to point out is that between the labials, if you see any ducts within the fibrous connective tissue, septae, you could call those interlobular ducts. Do we see any here? Uh, not yet. But if we look around, I bet we will. Um, do we see any? Actually, I don't think we see any good ones. Uh, this might be a good shot at it right around here. Or maybe down here. Yeah, I think this might perhaps qualify as a interlobular duct if you truly believed that this uh, fibrous connective tissue septum here was between lobules. Um, I think I've given up on the possibility of intercalated ducts because almost all of these are striated. Uh, so I thank you very much.